keep partnering with the business, right? Keep partnering with the business to find solutions to business problems together because most business problems start and end with the people who are the strongest and, and most valuable asset to any business in any organization. So you can be part and parcel of the solution. Always know that. That's, that's how you get your voice at the table, right? So make sure that you're always talking to the business, getting their insights, incorporating their inputs into solutions. Be solution-oriented, be a partner, be collaborative with the business. You're together with them. It's not HR versus, you know, the, the broader mindset of operations <laughs> or whatever it might yeah. be. You've got to be in it together. So create that strategic partnership, be solution oriented. That's your way to have a seat at the table and you will never lose it from there. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to the HR Leaders Podcast. On today's episode, I'm joined by Josephine Barisha, who's the Chief HR Officer at XBO Logistics. During the episode, Josephine shares how XBO Logistics are connecting and engaging their remote workforce and how they've built a winning people strategy with data analytics and creativity. As always, before we jump into the video, make sure you hit the subscribe button, turn on the notification bell and follow on your favorite podcast platform. With that being said, let's jump in. Welcome to the show, Josephine. How are you? I'm doing well. How are you, Chris? I'm good. I'm good. As I said, I just uh, before we hit record, moving houses, so just a little bit of stress at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> but, but understandable. It's, it's like fifty percent stress, fifty percent excitement. So uh, once, <laughs> once once they're all moved in, I'll be happy. Um, I'm really just really looking forward to giving Robin the space to run around and cause chaos. <laughs> she will love it. She will absolutely love it. Yeah. Where are you based for? What, what, what am I looking at behind you? Is this an office home? Uh, it is an cool? office. It is oh. my office in Greenwich, Connecticut. It looks really That is nice. our headquarters for XPO. Yeah, thank you. It's a beautiful day today, actually. Yeah, it looks like a really like nice garden space and background behind. Yeah, you. yeah, yeah. It's a, it's a lot. We have lovely scenery here at the office for sure. Well, that's what you want when you're going to work. <laughs> that's right. That's, that's right. Nice. Um, before we jump into the um, podcast in a bit more detail, tell everyone a little bit more about you personally. Sure. And, and your journey to where we are now. Yeah, well, I lead the company's human resources organization, as you know. Um, I joined the company in early 2017, so I've been here about five and a half years. Um, and I actually joined as the senior vice president of Total Rewards and was so fortunate to be promoted to chief human resources officer two years ago uh, in the midst of the pandemic. And just as we announced the first of a series of spinoff and divestiture processes. So it's been a whirlwind. It's been a really, really busy time for our HR organization. Um, but I have have about 25 years of HR experience with global companies in various roles, but I would say my areas of greatest, greatest strength or focus uh, throughout my HR career have been total rewards, policy development, uh, HR tech initiatives, workforce analysis, and performance management. Uh, prior to XPO, I held various HR positions with Morgan Stanley, including head of compensation for 60,000 employees in 43 countries. Um, and then in terms of my educational background, I attended New York University for undergrad and majored in psychology with a concentration in neuroscience and a supplemental bi minor in biology. Uh, and then for graduate school, I attended Columbia University and majored in organizational psychology, which I know is an interesting pivot from the biological side of psychology. Yeah. Um, but as an undergrad at NYU, I actually worked closely with doctoral students conducting uh, psychological assessments and tests, analyzing the results, reporting the outcomes, essentially really helping doctoral students complete their dissertations. And during that time, I discovered organizational psychology and began studying employee behaviors in the workplace, including the notion that, you know, trust, respect, collaboration, and common purpose are foundational to organizational success. So I became deeply interested in the subject matter and ultimately decided to pursue human resources as a career after grad school. And like I said, I've been in HR for 25 years and I've never, never looked back. <laughs> wow. Wow, there's so much to take in there. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, so firstly, you're one of the few that actually chose HR. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't just fall on my lap. <laughs> no, like honestly, I've done what, 600 episodes now and I mm -hmm. probably could count on both hands the leaders that actually chose right. to go down this route. Many kind of found their way in from other parts of the organization as mm -hmm. well. But it kind of sounded like even before you knew HR, you had all of the essential ingredients and passions and interests 
right. that, that led you down this. And naturally, it makes sense <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> that, right. that you end, it ended up where you are right now. Um, why the total rewards side first? Or was that also just an opportunity, just out of interest? That was an opportunity. So when I was actually seeking employment at the time, you know, graduating from grad school, uh, I had many opportunities in front of me. And there were generalist opportunities, there were data analytics opportunities, total rewards, and um, I fell into this one. It was an interesting concept to me. I had already had so much rigor in statistics from my uh, experience with the doctoral students that I thought, okay, this is a great segue. I have a, a really strong skill set in this. Why not? It would give me strong footing as my first role entering into the working world, into the corporate environment. I didn't know anything more about it other than what I had studied. So um, that gave me some comfort that at least I had background here that I could leverage. So nice. um, I thought good segue makes sense. Well, let's go. Right. And that's <laughs> how I landed in it. So It's so interesting because even the role of total rewards has dramatically changed. Even, yes. even so much, even in the last couple of years, even more so given the events we've just had behind us. Mm -hmm. but it must be really helpful for you now sitting in the CHRO seat, having the analytical statistical background and experience. Absolutely. Because that's an absolutely. area where many leaders struggle. Oh, absolutely. And, um, you know, I've got to say that analytical background has helped me so much in this position, obviously in my total rewards position, but even kind of parlaying that into the broader scope of HR, you know, here at XPO, we're committed to measuring the impact of our programs and solutions so we can know instead of guess where we should further invest our attention, our energy, our budget funding. You know, of course, we don't want to create analysis paralysis either, right? So yeah. we have to be targeted and intentional about what we want to measure and how that aligns to our organization's strategy and priorities for any given year. But having that information at your fingertips and knowing how to use it and how to make improvement happen as a result of analyzing those, those particular stats or sources of information is critical. It just makes you better, right? We're a culture of continuous improvement here at XPO. So we're always looking for how can we get better? You don't know how to get better if you're not sure where you stand right now. That's that's really the crux of it. So. Yeah, a hundred percent. And especially with a, a hybrid workforce, we need that data. That that's That's your vision now. You can't right. see everyone in person in front of you. Exactly. So if you don't have that, then you really have no pulse on the organization's health, right, right? Of your right. people and connect with them. Yeah. Could you share an example? What's an example for you that you're most excited about of how you've used that data now sitting in, in the role? One that really oh my goodness. out to you. Chris, I have so many ways. I don't even know where <laughs> to start. I guess um, maybe for me, I would say the number one most formidable source of information, I think for us, uh, would be our employee engagement surveys uh, that we run quarterly here at XPO. Um, that allows us to generate feedback loops with our associates, right? So they rank their job satisfaction on a scale of one to 10, and then they answer questions about what it would take to get them to a 10 if they're not already a 10, and then they provide their best idea on how to improve the company, and then we mine all that data extensively that we receive from our employees, listening carefully to the collective voice of our associates, and generate solutions or implement ideas that they directly suggested to us, right? Um, we also have an annual hourly engagement survey, so just a little bit of background on XPO's workforce. We're about 80% hourly uh, employees and 20% salary, right? So, uh, and our, our hourly workforce is very dispersed across the country. We're actually, um, when you think about the fact that we're spinning off our pure play, less than Trump or business that remains, so our remain co business is going to be about 23,000 people across US, Canada, and India. Um, and like I said, again, about 80% is hourly. So we really try, try to reach that workforce as much as we can. They're very mobile, right? So we've got the bulk of those hourly employees are, are really drivers and dog workers. They're not in front of a computer all the time to be able to take these surveys, right? Uh, so this year, we're actually um, pushing these surveys out to their handheld devices so that they nice. can we can get better, richer information. So I'm very excited about this, Chris. So they, we have been doing this annual survey for actually several years now, and now we're finally getting it onto the mobile devices, right? Um, so this survey that we're pushing out for the annual hourly workforce contains a series of questions regarding how we're operating, um, how employees are feeling about their work environment, our inclusion practices, comp and benefits offerings. Like, tell us everything about how you're feeling, what's your sentiment, 
on all these items. And then we'll we'll get the gauge from them on all of this, right? And they'll tell us on various scales what they think, how they think we're doing as a company. And then we'll be able to ferret out from there what we need to improve upon. We've been doing this, like I said, for years. So we've been generating many different new solutions. And I'll get into another one in a second because the other, um, the other piece of data that I think is often maybe overlooked or maybe under discussed is um, healthcare claims, right? So, and, and this is very important for us in, in terms of our population. So we've learned from our analysis of aggregate claims data that our top two conditions across the organization are diabetes and musculoskeletal issues. So we've introduced a specialized diabetes care program through Anthem, which is our medical insurance carrier. And for 2023, we're gonna be providing free uh, virtual physical therapy um, through which associates can access free uh, free video exercise sessions, it's kind of the best way to describe it, and a physical therapist on demand for treating their uh, knee, back, shoulder injuries, other pain points throughout their body, all on their own schedule. So again, remember, many of our employees are out on the road or they're, they're stacking freight into trailers, right? So they have very physical demands on, on them in their jobs day to day, and they are on a tight schedule, right? So they're, you know, we, we have to get customers freight out to them on time, right? So um, we've got to be able to be nimble in how we give them uh, solutions and strategies for taking care of themselves, right? So in analyzing that data, we thought, wow, with the musculoskeletal issues they're facing, the number two condition that we found, uh, We've got to give them something that allows them to be agile with this solution. And then separately, given, again, that much of our workforce is on the road all the time, we're also going to offer free virtual physical exams. So um, associates will be able to access a home test kit. So, for example, they can actually prick their finger and provide a blood sample, send that back in a prepaid package directly to a lab, get the test results, and then they'll receive a virtual physician consultation when the results are back, and they get up to four free follow-up checks after that. So literally all of this diagnosis can happen from that, that test kit that they get. So they can basically have a mobile, like physical done for them virtually, and then get all this consultation from it without ever stepping into a doctor's office. So it's just, these are some of the things where when you yeah. analyze the data, you understand the demographics of your population and what their jobs are like, what their, the structure of their work environment is like, and the demands on the job, you amalgamate all that together, and that data provides you with all these ideas for great solutions of how we can care for our associates. Yeah. No, I, I love that so much on so many fronts, because sometimes there's this temptation to have all of these benefits right. in all, all, all these different areas, and, and you're not really solving the actual problem. Kind right. of being reactive rather than proactive and you wonder why the claims are so high right, <laughs> uh, exactly. on there whereas actually exactly. if, you, if you invested in the, the analytics and you can right. pinpoint these are the top two let's focus on being proactive not right. reactive that's right uh, and more importantly creating a better life that's right <laughs> for, for those employees right 100 uh, percent, chris mm. yeah no i love that and again that kind of comes from your background that probably comes quite natural <laughs> yes exactly <laughs> to, to, look, to, to look at it through that lens um, that's right as well is there a plan in the future to you know annual survey is great but is there a plan in the future to use that mobile app to f connect more often throughout the year post oh, uh, updates and because that's absolutely keep making it feel more connected part of the organization yes. engaged Yes, and you're hitting on something else we're actually piloting right now, Chris. So it's actually a perfect segue into communication because, um, you know, when we think about how we keep our workforce with us and, and connected to our culture, communication is key, yeah. right? And we have to be able to reach that workforce, especially this distributed workforce that, again, isn't in front of the computer all the time. Um, so we are launching a new communication app on these mobile devices um, that will help us continue to give information, even in uh, sort of bite-sized text alerts to yep. our employees to say, okay, open enrollment is coming. It'll be here November 8th to 22nd. And um, this is where you go to access the information you need or even training videos, Chris, right? So the, the whole other component to HR 
around what are we doing to make sure we're enhancing skill sets of our employees and allowing them to grow in their careers. And the fact that we can also use these devices to now issue um, these various sort of snippets around, okay, here's how you properly load and secure freight into a trailer. Here are the five tips to remember on doing that really well and, and really effectively. Um, so all of those things will be accessible on these apps as well. So we're so excited to do this for, for our associates and they are excited. So we, uh, we are done with our first pilot and now we're gonna move very quickly to release that app uh, throughout the whole network. And we have about 290 or so facilities um, in this less than truckload portion of the business, which again will be the remain co-XPO business post our spinoff. Um, and you know they'll, they'll all be able to have access to this and it'll be a, a rich source of information for them. They'll be able to see their paychecks through the app. Um, everything will be secure for them. Um, and you know, it'll be one-stop shopping for everything they need. And again, when the company uh, wants to you know, articulate certain messages that we think are important for our employees to understand, that'll be the way that we go, right? Yeah, I, I love that. I think uh, the days of us trying to log into our intranets to find information <laughs> <laughs> exactly. are long gone. But I think one of the big trends that have come out the last couple of years is, is, the, is the customization, right? Yeah, and, that's right. And, and creating that experience. You know, we do it for our customers, but we don't right. do it for our own employees entirely. Right. So for them to be able to access the information how they want, how best works for them in their environment, on the road, in the warehouse, right. et cetera, at a touch of a button is a mm -hmm. game changer. It's it's kind of, a game honestly, it's like, it does frustrate me a little bit because it's taken us so, us so long to get here. <laughs> um, that's right. well, but I'm, I'm so happy to hear that you're, you're doing that because that's really going right. to make a real experience because especially for those truckers, I'm sure it's pretty pretty lonely out there. Right, that's right. That's I'll be right. on and the road, et cetera. Exactly. And so it keeps them connected. It keeps mm. them connected to their facility. It keeps them connected to the company as a whole. Um, and that's the, the beauty of the app is that you can actually customize content exactly to your point down to the sort of micro level. So mm -hmm. what's going on at your facility and what's going on at the company, right? So there's like the broader culture and then there's the culture specifically at your facility, which should resonate with the broader culture as well. But there's also just specific notifications that you need to be aware of when you're not at the facility all day long because you're delivering freight, right? So. Yeah. Yeah, so much better because especially in the past, it was just bombarding employees with, and with and ninety percent of it didn't relate to Chris. You know, what is it, it relevant? Yeah, right. what what does it even mean for me right. <laughs> um, right. as well? Or how do I find X, Y, and Z? Now it's specific, right? To those individuals because I, I I saw so much data recently about you know, like most employees ninety percent don't even know what benefits they even have, right? Uh, uh, That's or, right. Or, or or where to find them. Or, That's right. That's uh, exactly uh, right. Yeah, as well. What's been the um, reaction so far? The feedback from people that have been trying it out. What What's the reaction been? Finally, <laughs> that's been the reaction. <laughs> Finally, uh, we we get all this information at our fingertips. This is going to be awesome. I mean, they are so excited for us, and that now it makes us that much more excited. Just amplifies how excited we are to do this more broadly now across the network. So, and it took so long to get here to your point, Chris, because we also have to rely on these solutions being developed over time from an industry perspective too. So we finally found the one that we think works best for us because obviously, you know, you go out there, you RFP for different types of solutions and you're looking for what's going to um, be most fitting, fit for purpose for your culture. Um, and, and we think we found you know exactly what what we believe will work um so so far there's a lot of excitement and everyone's you know looking forward to this what does this mean meant for you and the team about how you can operate and also how you allocate time now has this freed you up to be more focused on you know now you kind of more time and energy on the people side if that makes sense as opposed to the technology um you know probably i think um the fact that we can we have a more automated way to, to get our messaging out to employees will make it easier. Because when you think about how we have to operate today, a lot of the messaging we're giving is on posters. And so you have to work with the print shops and you have to um, get that messaging co correct. And then you have to make sure that you're distributing this to 290 different facilities and that everybody's compliant with 
posting it up in the same location on this. I mean, for sure. And then, and then it can change. <laughs> right. And then it can again. change. <laughs> right. And then you do it all over again. And then you have to ensure that everyone's taking down the old messaging and the new ones. Up. <laughs> so definitely for sure, just being able to streamline the way and the speed at which we get the communications out. That's the other thing. A hundred percent. It will, will definitely help us in terms of reducing the manual efforts. Involved. Yeah. The admins. Yeah. yeah now, now a lot of the admins. Yeah, I'm sure there's other projects that have now free is freed you and the team up to focus on other more value add strategic projects. That's right. Um, as well. Um, I want to go back a second and ask you the question of what was the biggest challenge for you moving from Comp and Ben's side over to sitting in the CHRO seat, especially during a pandemic? What would you say right. was the biggest challenge for you? Um, I would say the biggest challenge for me was not trying not to rely so heavily on my analytical side all the time. So I, you know, had to rely much more on the EQ side of me, which I have. I have plenty of EQ. I would not survive 25 years in HR. <laughs> you wouldn't. Happen. No. Um, but it was a true test in the beginning because I had spent so much time on the total award side before entering into this role to kind of rejigger and, and resurrect in, in my in my suite of skills, that that EQ factor, right? And of course, you know, when you're when you're dealing with benefits and you're you're actually dealing with a lot of sensitive employee situations. So it was easy to turn it back on, but I had to remind myself, oh yeah, you know, there, there's a whole other element to this beyond just what people think about how they're paid and, and what their benefits look like. Yes, that's part and parcel of the whole retention strategy and attraction strategy when you're trying to bring talent into the company, but there are so many other facets to this. Um, so I, I pivoted a lot. I, I decided that, you know what, I, I think I've done a good enough job on the compensation and benefits of the company. Where do I need to focus next? So I went immediately into deep dives on the other facets of HR now that I had to own it, right, and, and be responsible for it, um, and decided to really do a diagnostic on where have we underinvested in HR? Uh, where do we need to kind of bulk up and uh, provide more investment? And, you know, what's going to give us the greatest return? What's going to give the company and our, our, our associates the greatest return? Um, and what type of a macro environment are we in? And I knew we were going to have to get ahead of the market as it relates to the great resignation and such, because the pandemic was only going to last for so long. And you have to have some foresight in the job around this. And I thought, look, in a quieter period, this is exactly the time that if you're behind on something, but behind on certain initiatives, or you're not as automated as perhaps you should be, this might be the time to focus on that, such that when we reemerge from something like a pandemic, you're now armed with what you need to compete in the market. And that is exactly what we did. So when I shifted focus, um, I, I really was looking for where are the gaps? Where are the gaps for us relative to the market and how HR operates and put a lot of focus there. Mm -hmm. You've already mentioned already some of the great things that you're already doing based on mm -hmm. that. What are some of the other things that you're most excited about moving forward that you're working on? Oh my goodness. Um, I will say when we, when I pivoted from comp and benefits um, into broader HR, um, I focused a lot on recruiting, Chris, and we did so much work on, on automating and streamlining our recruiting processes, and it was the perfect timing to do it. So we were doing this while we were in the midst of the pandemic, and when we emerged, we were ready. We had launched this texting tool that we hadn't had before to reach candidates in mass, right? So when we're, when we're marketing our jobs and when we're um, looking for certain candidate profiles, we were able to get out there and say, hey, are you interested here? Are you interested much more quickly? We didn't have that before. What so did you use, if you don't mind asking? What tool did you use? I'm always interested in sharing with our listeners. Well, if you most, of it was, most of it was email. And it was email oh, really? that was... It was email being generated, again, going back to our point about being manual, it was manually generated emails to people who we had interest in from LinkedIn profiles or from Indeed or whatever sourcing we were doing. So um, so we, we were not reaching in mass the groups of people that we needed to reach in order to be competitive and sort of take that, that talent from the talent pool in the market as quickly as possible. So... Your, your time to market is extremely important in recruiting, especially as the environment gets more competitive. So we improved that dramatically. And when you talk about 
data and statistics and what we monitor, I mean, we were able to close that gap by more than 50%. So we are 50% faster than we were before in going out to market and reaching candidates much more quickly. Um, so we, we deployed that texting tool. Um, we deployed a tool called Modern Hire, um, which allows us to do pre-hire assessments and realistic job previews for our employees. What a game changer, right? Because now we're able to assess whether or not a candidate has the right skill set for the job. They're taking an inventory, they're answering certain questions. And if you have those basic skills, you can move on to the next round and, and continue to go through the process, right? The hiring process. Um, so that helped us tremendously in terms of quality of talent, in terms of people knowing whether they thought they were the right fit for the job. And then that creates a lot more stickiness in, during the onboarding and going forward, right? When you think about how do I attract the best employees and then how do I retain them? If they think they're a good fit for us, and we think yep. they're they're a good fit for us, right? Then it's magic, right? So, um, so this tool has helped us tremendously in doing that. Between the realistic job previews and showing them kind of in a three D format, this is what the job entails. Especially if you're a dock worker, let's say, uh, coming on board in the company. Do you realize that you're lifting, you're lifting boxes, you're lifting, um, you know, sometimes irregularly shaped items, and you're you're stowing them into these trailers, and this is what it takes to do that, right? So the realist job preview has helped with that. So we deployed that during my first foray into the job, and that has helped, helped like I said, tremendously. And then we also um, engaged in this um, this effort to take all of these job boards that we post our jobs out to um, and we sort of amalgamated it under one contract through a specific vendor that essentially goes out to thousands of job boards all at once. And then they put a sort of dashboard and analytical um, analytical process behind it where they come back and report to us on a monthly basis. Here's how all these job boards are doing. Here's how much reception you're getting from the market That's in great. the job post that you did. And so then we can hone and say, all right, well, these ones don't work for us. So we're not going to pay to be posting there anymore. You know, we'll shift our, our focus here, right? Um, and then the other thing we did is we invested a lot in social media marketing as well, which, which we were underinvested in before. And that is another game changer because it generates leads for you, especially as we have 130 driver schools that we run internally here. So it's part of our massive kind of grow at XPO training program. We have these driver schools whereby even if you don't have a CDLA license to drive, um, to drive a truck of the size that we drive in less than a truckload, uh, you can come in, you can train with us, you're, you're paid while you're being trained. So, wow. um, so you know, you, you come in, you train, and we needed leads for this. So how do you generate those leads? You've got to reach them wherever they are. So um, we went through all of this sort of social media advertising, and we did a lot of honing through analytics again uh, to figure out, you know, are we, are, are we reaching to the audience who would be interested in these types of jobs? Game changers. So we came out of the gate from the, I know the pandemic's not over, but we came out of the gate, you know, as, as everything sort of started to subside with the pandemic, having all the tools now available to go out there, compete, do it right, do it well. Um, and we've hired more people, especially on the driver front. That is where we have most of our headcount here. Um, but we have hired more than we ever have in the history of XPO. So, and this is again, during the, the challenge of, the labor market, the great resignation, et cetera, because we were now prepared with all these tools in front of us. Absolutely love that. And uh, I was going to ask you, but you kind of answered it already. Like in the UK as well, there's been headlines in the news, you know, for many months about the lack of drivers, um, you know, the skill, the shortage of drivers, uh, especially for the big trucks, like you mentioned, right. we need to specify. And the fact that you have the academy uh, is is amazing because most of these That's companies, they're, they're competing yeah. in salary now. I That's think it's right. going to pay more and more. You can't keep complaining. You can't just keep right. going up and up and up uh, right. on, on right. the salary side. Um, and also, again, that's not what, what's going to retain people. But the that's fact right. that you have the school, but more importantly, right. then you're then connecting with that audience through Instagram, TikTok. I'm not sure what platforms you use, but that's where they that's are. Right. That's where they live. That's right. And giving them an opportunity to come in and paid whilst they're being trained. Right. Very exciting. That's yeah. right. And we also have our Grow at XPO program, which allows um, people who are hired as dock workers, right, to come in. You may come in as a dock worker, so you may be starting as, you know, 
a freight loader. Basically, you're loading freight into trailers and you're getting it ready for pickup for drivers to come take the trailer, drive the truck over to whatever destination the customer's freight needs to go to. Um, but as a dock worker, you can also then ladder up into becoming a driver as well. And that's how to, exactly to your point, Chris, is the UK had, had this issue. France also had the issue. Mm -hmm. um, and we here in the United States as well, around these driver shortages, but between our lead campaign uh, through social media, um, our Driver Academy, as you mentioned, and our Grow at XPO career pathing process, we've been able to fill these jobs and, and knock on wood, we've been successful. So um, it's, it's been very helpful to have all these tools in place for sure. Mm -hmm. I think another thing that we, we spoke about a lot that came up with a lot of my guests that are similar, we have a lot of blue collar workers, is mm -hmm. how do you make sure that there's not this us and them mentality right. between your in office workers? And your and your external. How have you managed to navigate? I feel like you've already told me so many things, like that, like the way you communicate yeah. is a big part of that. But is there anything else that you had in mind of how do we make sure we can feel like there's this not this us and them mentality, if that makes sense? You know, it's interesting. We didn't have very much of that, and I will say here at headquarters at XTO, we actually have been in the office since I want to say August, September of 2020. So you never really, you never really stopped. <laughs> we never really stopped. So. Um, it's hard to have the us versus them mentality when, you know, we, we've actually been in office at the very headquarters that manages the whole business, the whole company, right? From the CEO all the way down to the workers on the field, to your point. Um, but I have to say, our, our employee base, they love their jobs. They interface with customers all the time. And they, they want so much for customers to be satisfied, Chris. That's all that mattered to them. And all that mattered to them were, you know, was that they were performing a heroic act for our society, for our economy. I mean, the, the, the vigor and the enthusiasm with which our employees came to work every single day during the pandemic is just unparalleled. It really is. And there was nothing that could ever kind of dampen their mood about that. They they were on a mission, you know, and, and they felt that way throughout the entire pandemic. And we certainly did our part as a company to take care of them. Um, and, and we provided so many benefits even during the pandemic that I think made that a little bit easier as well. Um, but yeah, it, it was, we didn't feel the us versus them mentality. Right. They were able to, you know, stave that off because we were all in it together. So yeah. Well, given what you've told me for the last half an hour, I'm not surprised. <laughs> Thank <laughs> that, you. That's the case. But at the end of the day, if you're taking care of them, they're going to take care of your customers. So you know, it's, it's a win for it's a win for everyone. That's uh, right. You know, and investing in our people, the end goal is that the benefit, our, the business benefits, society benefits um, as as well. Totally yeah. agree. Listen, before I let you go, I want to jump into our quick fire round. So I don't, yeah. I just, I, your team doesn't know about these questions. So, <laughs> oh, no. yeah, so I ask everyone, so, but you've got only got 20 seconds to answer each question. Are you ready? Oh my goodness. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's, don't worry, I'm not going to scare you. Um, what are some, what are your hobbies and passions outside of the office? Um, spending time with my son. I love spending time with him. I love to travel. I love to read. Um, I don't, I hope you don't ask me any questions about this. I don't, I don't watch movies and I don't watch TV very much. <laughs> that's not, that's not a bad thing. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, no, I, I, um, you know, I love, I love spending time with my family really, you know, it's, uh, it's, I, I need it for my balance. <laughs> it's funny. Cause I say that, so, you know, you would, people wouldn't normally classify that as a hobby, but it really yeah. is like, you know, if I, that's, the, uh, that's what gives me joy. Yeah. It gives me energy. It's what revitalizes me. So, Absolutely. Yeah. Um, Absolutely. I play. I play a lot of sports with my son, even though I'm horrible at playing sports. <laughs> I play baseball with him. I play basketball with him. I mean, nice. he loves it because he defeats me every single time. <laughs> but as long as he's happy, I'm happy. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, amazing. Um, if you could click your fingers and change one thing about HR, what would you change? Um. Well, I love that I have this here at XPO, but for the industry at large, uh, HR needs to have a seat at the table at all times. So they should always be in the management or operating committee of the company, um, always have a voice at the table and, and always be contributing to the bottom line of the business. Yeah. It's still, it's, it, after 15 years of doing this, it still seems crazy. We still have to say that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, uh, you're, you're, that's right. you're still right. And I, I'm, I'm quite fortunate that I speak to the, maybe the one or 2%, but mm -hmm. in reality, most companies that still isn't the case. So it is important to still, 
put to make that point. I know what it feels like to have it, and I think every single stage hero should should have this experience. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. If you don't have one, just walk in the room and sit down. <laughs> right. Exactly. <laughs> Get your seat. Exactly. It's gotten um, better since the pandemic, but a hundred percent. Right. Everyone looked to their. All of a sudden, everyone looked to their HR team and said, right. "What do we do?" I said, "Oh, now you want here." <laughs> no, exactly. Exactly. But I, I it does, you know, to, to have taken that much change in society to yeah. get there is probably, you know, um, yeah. I, I think I think having more of that would be excellent. For me. I agree. I agree. How do you think that your 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 family would describe what you do for a living <laughs> i think they think i hire and fire people <laughs> <laughs> for the most part um they think i have a lot of board meetings <laughs> yeah yeah um so i have a lot of meetings and i hire and fire people um and my job <laughs> is important that's what i think they would say nice important nice. to the company right yeah which is true um mm -hmm. what legacy do you want to leave behind um, I hope that um, our associates all feel like we are together with them at all times, that we hold them near and dear, that there isn't a single move we make or a decision we make as a company that doesn't have them in mind and at heart in everything that we do. And I hope that's the legacy of me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely important. What would you say mm -hmm. is the biggest investment you've made in yourself personally? Oh, <laughs> that's a good question. Um, the fact that I started to exercise a little bit more recently, I think it truly has made me feel a lot better, um, physically, even sort of mentally, um, just giving myself 10 to 15 minutes to decompress in the morning, you know, I, I think has really helped me out a lot. Yeah, no, that, that one's huge. So for me, I can't, I suffer from anxiety and if I'm not exercising, it, yeah. it really impacts it's my mental health. Such a great release. It really is. Yeah. Yes. I'm with you on that one. Um, who's one person in your career that stands out to you um, that, that really had an impact on your career? Oh, there's so many, so many, Chris. Um, but, you know, I will say I had one manager who um, very early on in my career said, look, you are amazing at what you do, but you always have your guard up and you've got to understand that in order to create better relationships, to network more, um, to really be connected to other people, You've got to understand that informality breeds trust. You've got to let your guard down a little bit, be a little bit more informal, show people you're human so they can trust you. It was a huge, huge, for me, that I had never gotten feedback like that before. I mean, I thought it was, okay, I have to be perfect at everything, and my job yeah. needs to be, you have to have high-quality product, and um, and that's all I had cared about early on in my career. Then I realized, well, my eyes were open, I was managing people, and it was important to understand that you needed to create that connection, and sometimes that means being a little vulnerable, being human. And once I had that feedback changed my whole mindset on how to manage and how to work with people <laughs> um yeah. so it, it it changed me forever that is so so important right because we're mm -hmm. in especially when oh when i first became manager many years ago you're told that you have to be invincible right and that's that right they're not your yes. friend they're not your friends you're their manager right. and all those things and I, I remember thinking wait a minute i spend most of my life with these people and you're telling me right. not to be their friends and, right. not to, and i can't tell them that i'm not feeling great or that right. i need a day off because i'm feeling a bit of burnt out and mm -hmm. for, for, for me, I, I'm with you. The moment that I did change that, it became almost like a superpower. My right. team, my team would, exactly. my, my team would open up to me. We could have really, uh, you know, hard conversations, but important, important conversations. The, right. enga the engagement, everything changed right. from that moment. So I love that. Um, what would you say is one thing that HR leaders don't talk about enough, but they sh really should? Um, I think that especially during the pandemic, we were feeling the exact same way as all the other employees across the organization. And I think we burned ourselves out a lot trying to be extra heroic and to suppress what it was that we were feeling during that entire time. I don't think we express that we are as much human beings in HR as everybody else in the company is. And Sometimes as HR leaders, you know, when you're when you're at the table with business leaders, um, you are concerned about showing that sort of vulnerability or the fact that you might be nervous about how your own department is feeling. Um, but I think that we really need to be honest about that 
and and I think that would be helpful for our own HR organization. We can't forget as leaders, we have our own people within our function to manage. It's, yes, we have the entire employee base, but we also have our people. So are we focused on them and what they need? And, and how are we arming them with what it takes to cope and survive this so that they can then lend a hand to everyone else? And um, I, I definitely turned my focus very heavily towards that, even though I didn't talk about it much. I did do it, right? Um, but I think escalating that and making sure it's it's known and, and everyone's aware of it is important. Yeah. It's something not, not many people think about, right? And I had many private conversations with your colleagues that were really struggling right. during right. that time. But who does HR go to? Right. When it HR helps? go to? Right. You know? Exactly. <laughs> Uh, mm -hmm. as, as well so yeah and uh, I'm glad that we are having the conversation more now and we are supporting mm -hmm. each other so that's good to, good to hear and last question mm -hmm. um, what advice would you give to the HR leaders of tomorrow that one day will be sitting in your seat absolutely keep partnering with the business right keep partnering with the business to find solutions to business problems together because most business problems start and end with the people who are the strongest and, and most valuable asset to any business in any organization. So you can be part and parcel of the solution. Always know that that's, that's how you get your voice at the table, right? So make sure that you're always talking to the business, getting their insights, incorporating their inputs into solutions, be solution oriented, be a partner, be collaborative with the business you're together with them it's not hr versus you know the the broader mindset of operations <laughs> or whatever it might yeah. be you've got to be in it together so create that strategic partnership be solution oriented that's your way to have a seat at the table and you will never lose it from there amazing well look thank you so much for taking the time to come on the got show um, and sharing the journey I'm, I'm really excited for you and the team thank Sounds like you really really great work already but i'm sure a lot more ahead <laughs> yes we do definitely <laughs> keep you busy i'll have to come check yes. in and get check in again in a year's time see how you're getting on <laughs> Wonderful. Uh, as well but thanks again and i wish you and the team all the best until we next week uh, thank you likewise thank you chris i appreciate it this was fun thanks